Hello everyone, I'm back. My fringe has grown out. I have a giant pimple on my face. Just ignore it. Moving on. I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different for me in this video. It's going to be a conspiracy theory video. I find conspiracy theories, true crime, that kind of thing, really, really interesting. I watch a lot of TV shows, a lot of YouTube content, that has to do with conspiracy theories and true crime and I love it so I thought that I would start making videos like that. The topic that I'm going to be covering in this video is something that I have literally had in my brain for years. I did a research essay in my history class on this topic when I was in year 11. So the topic I'm going to be talking about today is the death of Marilyn Monroe. Is my bird really going to scream like that while I'm trying to film? Everybody knows Marilyn Monroe, she is a household name, she is an icon, but not many people actually know the full details of the events surrounding her death. So that's what I'm going to go into today and some of the shadiness surrounding her death. So I have some notes look, written on my filthy, filthy laptop, so if I'm looking down that's why I just want to make sure I get all of the facts right because I want you to know of the injustice that has gone on here. Oh my god, and now my mom is feeding our koala and yelling. So I'm gonna start by going through the timeline of the events leading up to and after her death. To begin with, Marilyn spent her last day alive at her Brentwood home. In the morning she met with photographer Lawrence Schiller to discuss the possibility of publishing nude photographs in her Playboy edition. She also received messages from her personal massage therapist, talked with friends on the phone and signed for deliveries. Present at the house in the morning were her housekeeper, Eunice Murray, who you will hear a lot about during this video, and Patricia Newcomb, her publicist who had stayed overnight. According to Newcomb, she and Monroe had an argument as she had not slept well the night before. Monroe, that is. Dr. Ralph Greenson arrived at the house at 4.30 p.m. to conduct a therapy session with Marilyn and he asked Patricia Newcomb to leave. Before leaving at around 7 p.m., he asked Eunice Murray, the housekeeper, to stay overnight to keep Marilyn company. At approximately 7 to 7.15 p.m., she received a call from Joe DiMaggio Jr. and he detected nothing alarming in her behavior. At approximately 7.40 to 7.45 p.m., Monroe called Dr. Greenson to tell him about the call with Joe DiMaggio Jr. Monroe retired to her bedroom at approximately 8 p.m. Later, she received a call from actor Peter Langford who became alarmed as she sounded under the influence of drugs and told him to, quote, say goodbye to Pat, say goodbye to the president, and say goodbye to yourself because you're a nice guy before drifting off. Unable to reach Monroe, Langford called his agent Milton Ebbins, who unsuccessfully tried to reach Dr. Greenson and later called Monroe's lawyer, Milton A. Rudin. Rudin called Monroe's house and was assured by Eunice Murray, the housekeeper, that Monroe was fine. At approximately 3 a.m., Eunice Murray awoke, sensing something was wrong. She saw a light under Monroe's locked bedroom door but was unable to get a response. Eunice Murray phoned Dr. Greenson who told her to look through the bedroom window. Eunice Murray saw Monroe laying face down on her bed with a sheet over her clutching a telephone receiver through the window. Dr. Greenson arrived shortly after. He entered the room by breaking a window and found Monroe dead. He called her physician, Dr. Hyman Engelberg, who arrived at the home at around 3.50 a.m. and officially confirmed her death. At 4.25 a.m., the LAPD were notified. So that's the timeline of everything. So now I'm gonna go through the three theories of what happened that night and the cause of her death. So the first theory and the official cause of death in this case is suicide. So by the early 1960s, Marilyn had been dependent on alcohol, barbiturates and amphetamines for several years and had experienced various mental health problems such as anxiety, depression, low self-esteem and chronic insomnia. She was the victim of violent mood swings and had attempted suicide numerous times before. Some suggest she even attempted suicide in the knowledge she would be resuscitated and would gain sympathy. However, it was noted by everyone Marilyn had spoken to in the days leading up to her death and even Joe DiMaggio Jr., whom she spoke with just hours prior, that she seemed to be in a positive mood and was making plans for future movies and events. It's even alleged that she was planning to remarry uh, Joe DiMaggio, so the question is, why would she kill herself? So to be honest, besides her history of drug use and mental illness, there was literally only one piece of evidence that I could find to support the theory of suicide. And when I say evidence, I say it very loosely. This information that I found is not confirmed 
by anyone in any way. It is a bit of hearsay. So it is reported that Robert Kennedy, so that is JFK's brother, made a visit to Marilyn's home on August the 4th to deliver the news that John Kennedy wanted to break off the affair he was having with Marilyn Monroe. So it is widely speculated that JFK and Marilyn Monroe were having an affair. There is a lot of evidence to support that theory and it is kind of just like a widely known thing. This could be why she was in good spirits earlier in the day, but then her mood um, abruptly changed causing her to commit suicide because JFK broke off their affair. So that is the theory of suicide. Do with that what you will. The next theory is murder. Now there are a couple of different murder theories. One is to do with like the mob, that kind of thing. That theory I don't really find much weight in. The one I find the most evidence to support would be that Marilyn was murdered by the Kennedys. Listen, if you look into things, the Kennedys are pretty shady. So just saying. There are a number of credible people who claim Marilyn had affairs with um, one, if not both Kennedy brothers. Like I said before, it's widely known that she was having an affair with JFK. He was known to indulge in extramarital activity, so it's not really a stretch to believe that he couldn't resist the charms of one of the most attractive women of the time. Marilyn had unrealistic notions of becoming the first lady, with some reports claiming that JFK had even promised to leave his wife for her. The relationship became too risky and tiresome, so JFK broke it off. What allegedly became so troublesome was Marilyn's rage at the relationship being broken off. Marilyn allegedly threatened to call a press conference, reveal the affair, ruin both men's reputation, and possibly even reveal state secrets she have, may have been told um, throughout their encounters. So there is a lot of shady shit that went on during this case. So some evidence to support this theory is the fact that Marilyn was concluded to have died of an overdose of barbiturates, which are a powerful sedative used to treat anxiety. Empty pill bottles were found by her bed, but during an autopsy it was discovered that there were no pills in her stomach and there were no pills in her digestive tract. It was noticed by the police officers first on the scene that there was no liquid in the room to aid in swallowing pills. It has been said by a number of people who knew Marilyn that she had great difficulty swallowing pills, always had to use water. But then later a glass of water was discovered by the police who swear that it was not there to begin with. So basically they're suggesting a plant. It was also noted by the police that when they turned up Eunice Murray was washing sheets. The room was extremely tidy and there were fresh sheets on the bed. So. Again, dodgy. Lividity on Marilyn's body suggested that she had died on her back but was found laying face down. So lividity is kind of like where your blood kind of like, th this is a very unscientific way, but it's like where your blood kind of settles. So it can create like bruising kind of stuff on your body when you die. So it suggested that she had died laying on her back but she was found laying face down. So that suggests that the body was moved and staged to look like a suicide. A lot of evidence uh, in the investigation went missing early on. Marilyn's autopsy was not completed as organs were destroyed before they could be examined and samples that were sent for testing were destroyed before testing could even be carried out. Why? Furthermore, photographs, samples, and slides of what was examined subsequently went missing. As well as that, witnesses changed their stories multiple times. Both doctors and Eunice Murray changed their stories a lot, even just in the initial days after uh, Marilyn's death, right up to Eunice Murray was changing her story, like literally right up until the day she died. It is reported as well that an ambulance was called to Marilyn's home at 11 p.m., but none of the witnesses mentioned that whatsoever. Um, but I think there is information online literally from the guy who drove the ambulance and he says that he went there. And then after the fact, phone records and police evidence records from the scene were later found to have gone missing from the case file as well. So there is literally no evidence left in this case. Like, you look into it, it's all gone. So, as you can see, shady, shady shit. So that is the theory of a Kennedy presidential murder. The last theory, which again I find quite compelling, is that Marilyn's death was an accident. So, it is widely believed that Marilyn died from a barbiturate enema as there was no evidence to support the drugs being ingested orally, not found in her stomach or digestive tract, um, or intravenously, intravenously, which is like in a vein, so with like a needle. If that is the case, who administered the enema? So Dr. Greenson had been working with Dr. Hyman Engelberg to wean Marilyn off nem Nembutrol? Is that how you say it? Substituting it for chloral hydrate to help her sleep as she had insomnia. It is suggested that Dr. Greenson arranged for Marilyn to have a chloral hydrate enema at night to help her sleep, unaware that she had been administering Nembutrol during the day. 
uh, these two drugs react adversely and would be a fatal concoction. So it is believed that Dr. Greenson had Marilyn's housekeeper, Eunice Murray, administer the enema later in the evening. The evidence to support this is that it has been stated that the two doctors did not communicate well with each other on Marilyn's prescriptions, and Dr. Greenson would not have prescribed the chloral hydrate enema had he known she'd been self self administering Nembutrol during the day. Neither Marilyn nor her housekeeper would have known the adverse reaction uh, of these two drugs when mixed, which would have resulted in her accidental death. Again. Like I said previously, the witnesses at the scene, Dr. Greenson, Dr. Engelberg, and Eunice Murray, changed their stories multiple times. The police were not called immediately by any of the three. An ambulance was not called. Eunice Murray first discovered her at 3 a.m. The police were not notified until an hour and 25 minutes later. So that gives them all the time in the world to do anything they want to that scene. Like I said before, when the police eventually did get called and did arrive, Eunice Murray was washing sheets. Why are you washing sheets at 4.25 a.m. when your boss, Marilyn Monroe, is laying dead on her bed? Why are you washing sheets? The bedroom was extremely tidy, there was fresh sheets on the bed, which could suggest that Eunice Murray was washing the sheets that were originally on the bed and then they put new ones on and moved Marilyn's body because of the lividity, etc. There were empty pill bottles, but no pills found in her stomach, no water to wash them down. Um, the scene was essentially just looked staged, like it was staged. And probably the most damning evidence to support this theory is that Dr. Greenson was reportedly heard saying, God damn it, he gave her a prescription I didn't know about. So, what does that say? See, that, that quote, you can find that in a lot of different sources online. The truth of it, who knows, we weren't there, but that quote you can find like a lot. There is weight in all three of these theories. I, however, just cannot believe based on this evidence that she killed herself. There is just such little evidence to support that theory and so much evidence to support a theory of murder or manslaughter or something else going on, a cover-up happening. Like, it is just too much. That is just my opinion, but I would love to hear yours, so leave below any theories or any opinions on the ones that I um, talked about in this video below. I would love to read them and hear your thoughts. Also, let me know if you like this video and if you want to see um, more videos like this from me. Conspiracy theories, true crime, unsolved murders, that kind of thing. And leave any suggestions for those kind of topics below if that's what you would like to see because I, it's so interesting and I would love to make this like more kinds of videos like this. So let me know. And again, just thank you to everyone who has subscribed to me recently and watched my Mac video. I really appreciate it. And I say this at the end of all my videos actually at the moment because I literally don't know what I'm doing. If you are a new subscriber, please tell me what you want to see from me. I know obviously that Mac video is kind of makeup-y, so if that's the kind of thing you want to see from me, just let me know because I'm happy to do that. But if you want to see other things, let me know that as well because I'll do anything. My Instagram and Twitter will be linked below and at the end of this video if you would like to see more of me on other platforms. I'd suggest checking out my Insta. I dressed up as Wednesday Adams for Halloween. It looked pretty fucking sick, so go check that out. And I will see you in my next video, hopefully sooner than the last. Thank you for watching and ciao.